Welcome to Between Two Barrels Podcast, live from Legend Studios. Between Two Barrels is a weekly podcast highlighting some of the legends across the state of Tennessee. From Dolly Parton to the elusive Tennessee wild man, from our head distiller to our legendary products and employees, this podcast will discuss spirits of all kinds here at Tennessee Legend Distillery. From country stars and cryptids to everything in between, we will talk about the life in a Tennessee distillery. Greetings, legends, and welcome to a, another episode of the Between Two Barrels podcast. Right here in Tennessee Legend Distillery on Winfield Dunn Parkway at Legends Studios. I am one of your hosts, the TLD superfan, Opie. And, of course, joined by the regional manager. And I am the assistant to the regional manager. Our regional manager and reg, uh, resident Bilo Brown, Brian Lowe himself. Greetings, legends, and thank you once again for that fantastic intro, Opie. Glad to be back with you guys once again for another episode of Between Two Barrels. Tyler or Opie, what are we going to be talking about on this go around? Well, we are going to be discussing uh, a very local legend. A uh, very statewide legend and somewhat the cousin of a national legend. Uh, the Tennessee Wildman, aka Sasquatch, the Wildman of the Tennessee Hills. It just depends on what your belief is about the Tennessee Wildman, how he connects to the illustrious Bigfoot. Bigfoot, uh, Yeti, uh, Skunk yes. Ape, uh, all of the above all monikers the above. used to describe uh, that lost connection mm-hmm. between. Cro Magnon, mm-hmm. or or even before that, and modern day man from the days of the Great Land Bridge before it was all underwater. Uh, sightings going all the way back to then. So we are going to be discussing the Tennessee Wild Man. Uh, before that, we're going to talk be talking a little bit about our time here at the distillery since the last episode. We're going to be highlighting another cocktail, uh, as well as a booze vocabulary word, kind of educational moment for the listeners. I like that term, boozcabulary. Boozcabulary. Talk boozy to me, baby. Uh, So we are going to do all that and more. Uh, However, uh, don't forget to follow us um, on Legend Studios. We have Instagram and a Facebook. Go uh, hit that like and follow on both of those social medias. Also check out all the Tennessee Legend Distillery social media as well as the website, TennesseeLegend.com to find out more about this uh, legendary distillery in East Tennessee and other parts of Tennessee. Uh, You can also hit us up at tldtube23 at gmail.com if you have any ideas or questions or suggestions, uh, drink ideas, things like that, using our product. Um, Just hit us up and we will discuss it on the episode and get back to you. Uh, So we've had some storms lately. Some, (laughs) some, some, Some... some storms, some legendary storms. Uh, right. Uh, and, and you've got a, a particular tale to tell the listeners. How, how was your week? <laughs> yeah, as, as it, it's, a, it's a unique time of year. Um, as a lot of you know, especially if you're listening in the southeast, especially, mm. um, that a lot of teams, college football teams, have started getting... Uh, their fall camps going and everything mm-hmm. else getting amped up. We're now getting into preseason for mm-hmm. NFL football. I mean, it's it's that time of year. Uh, uh, a lot of people's favorite time of year has come upon us. Um, but not only does it signify that, but it also signifies storm season. Storm season. Yes, especially for this region. And um, just like it's getting to be time for touchdowns of, mm-hmm. of the uh, football variety, I uh, believe we've had touchdowns yes. of, of another variety, uh, as you kind of alluded to, with the fact of us dealing with some storms in the area here lately. And yes, uh, I did have the unfortunate uh, situation that I had to deal with this week uh, whenever we had these storms come through what would have been um, 
Monday, mm-hmm. since this is going to be coming out the next Monday. The next Monday, what would have mm-hmm. been the previous Monday, the day that the uh, interview with Justin, our head distiller, mm-hmm. came out. Um, we actually had quite a few storms in the East Tennessee region. Uh, of course, that it all came from Middle Tennessee, mm-hmm. where some of our other locations had already dealt with it. Uh, but it seems like it may have picked up some some strength and power yeah. on its way uh, uh, after dropping down off the plateau, mm-hmm. coming there from the Cookville Crossell area. Um, I personally, which I didn't have to deal with it. Unfortunately, my wife was at home. Uh, during all of this, power goes out, uh, the wind's going, mm. blowing like none other, rain just as heavy as can be. And it was a situation where I got a call from her saying that the power had gone out, and then the next thing that comes out of her mouth as I'm talking to her, and I'm guessing this happens at that time, is that we have the first of what turns out to be multiple trees mm fall um two of which completely landed on the house jeez uh one of which had a limb that did the most damage to the the house house, actually impaled the house and where that limb broke off uh the remnants of said limb whenever it made contact with the ground went about two and a half three feet into the ground jeez so yeah, the the trees that wound up coming down were at least like the youngest was probably about a sixty year old tree. Uh, so we're looking at a minimum, you know, eighteen yeah. to twenty inch diameter yeah. on anything uh, that had come down. But thankfully, thankfully, no one or any of the animals or anything like that were injured, uh, and the house suffered minimal damage. Mm-hmm. Um, because this is a new house. You just got this Yeah, house. we just bought this house in what would have been March. So um, definitely experiencing a lot of, of firsts as well as first-time home buyers, first time having to go through the storm like this, first time going through the insurance process and everything else. So it's, it's definitely a learning experience, uh, and it's definitely a good thing that I'm already bald. Otherwise, I would be pulling hair out. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been a time, it's been an experience, but it's one of those things like anything else. And I'm sure just going back to making a football reference, the coaches Mm. put you through all this type of stuff to make you stronger and more prepared for the things that you're actually going to experience. Mm. So, I mean, this is just one of those type of life experiences. that's just going to make me stronger and more prepared for anything else that I may have to deal with down the road um and i'm not the only person that had to deal with that stuff of course i mean oh, no, tons we, of people in the area i mean thousands, thousands tens of, of thousands of people without power yeah and having to deal with the same thing and as unlikely as it may seem you yourself opie had to deal with some <laughs> issues off of the exact same storm yeah the, and it's so ironic because as as i'm getting all these updates from my wife while i'm here like you were you were here too when a lot of it started so the same situation yeah, we're getting calls from like, our, what, what, our what, better have what's going on and what's ironic is i remember before we uh recorded separately the the entrance and outro for that episode with justin is i said to you i said you know everyone freaks out when the storms start and i was like but you know living in this area blah 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 it's supposed to break up in the mountains i'm not that worried we've had that conversation Hours before everything happened yeah we're having that conversation yeah. and then both of us wind up yeah dealing with yeah. these high winds so and like i said in that conversation statistically a touchdown's hard here because yeah. we have the mountains it's, it's not gonna break to it survive. up yeah but we had three within driving distance, little touchdowns and destruction in uh, the Dandridge area, other Jeff County area, and one outside of Knoxville. Mm-hmm. That's Which I'm in. Statistically wild. Yeah, I'm for in this that area. Knox County. It's like very I'm wild. Knox Jeff border. Yeah. Uh, Knox Jeff severe border area of. And I was talking about that with uh, my buddy Josh and my wife. I was like, statistically, that shouldn't happen here. Three. Right. With him driving of each other. And I was talking about that on with the my same mom, day. too. And she was on like, well. On the same day. She's like, I mean, <laughs> it just happens. I was like, I've seen this movie. You know, we're going, we're, we got greenage going on. 
You know, right. this is this. I've seen this movie. Um, the where's, series where's of Pullman? tornadoes, you know, and all that. Or, I mean, or we've no, got, Paxton. Yeah, no, we've Paxton got, we've got tons of movies. Why, why I started to get nervous. I was like, three? Uh, right. Are we in for a week or what? Yeah. Um, but then gradually throughout the week, we've had hell and more rain and darker clouds. And I was like, good Lord, all in a week, this is getting interesting. It's it's that seasonal it's change. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can probably talk to the old timers, mm. people that definitely still go by the the farmers' almanac and stuff yeah, like that. The fogs of August and stuff like that. Yeah, this yeah. is this is stuff that that it's there. Mm-hmm. It continually happens, but society has gotten so far removed from mm-hmm. the natural aspect of things yeah. and going more toward the reliance on mm-hmm. digital stuff. Yeah, that they don't recognize it but i always tell people and uh, most of the time i get weird looks Mm -hmm. uh but i'm from a far enough ago generation in that bridge gap Mm -hmm. between you know depression era boomers before getting into the young uh, millennial younger millennials and stuff like that we're in that in that uh bridging generation to where coming up being taught stuff by depression era Mm -hmm. grandparents and stuff like that um that you have a life bringing rain Mm -hmm. and you have a killing rain or storms or season Mm -hmm. however you want to label it my grandfather always just said you got your life bringing rain and you got your death rain or your killing rain you get your life bringing rain at the end of winter going Mm -hmm. into spring all that's doing is thawing the ground out getting everything ready getting all those bulbs and everything else and the trees are soaking up all the nutrients and everything else from the death and decay of what winter was Mm -hmm. and is starting the life cycle anew for the spring the same thing has to happen in the opposite direction you have to go through that cycle you have to go through that process so during august september early october you have the death rain it's going to wind up being a cooler rain because the upper atmosphere has cooled off as opposed to getting warmer Mm -hmm. so what's going to be happening is all of that is basically creating the 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 preface Mm -hmm. of of winter coming so i mean yeah i mean it's just a natural cycle yeah we have to have it but uh, i was joking before we recorded i have this like this buddy of mine buck uh does a lot of like handcrafting with with chainsaws out of wood and stuff but and he's I, got a lot of material to work yes, with right he does now have a lot of material to work with so for josh he did a handcrafted like five six hundred pound frodo oh wow and for me he did sam okay and so i have this massive sam that's like two and a half three feet tall but heavy as the dickens sitting on my back porch just you know Kind of like right. a scarecrow type of thing. Um, and so, the funny so, thing is, uh, is our neighbor... Character realistic yes, size. very in. Hobbit character okay, realistic nice. size. And after we moved moved Sam up to the house from uh, where I grew up at, our neighbor, uh, about a football field away, is like, yeah, for like the first couple of weeks, I'd always see this young man out on the back porch, and I'd wave at him, and, I'd, and he'd, <laughs> I just thought he was a rude young man. <laughs> and... Uh, He's the parent of someone who works with Madison, which is how we lucked into this house. Okay. And she's like, no, that's their wood cut out of a hobbit. And he's like, oh. What's a hobbit? Well, that's why he didn't wave back. <laughs> it's wood. <laughs> and this thing is like, takes multiple people to move. Right. I mean, yeah, you said it's several hundred mm-hmm. pounds. And it's our, our test. Like, if wind's starting to blow, a storm's starting to pick up. If Sam doesn't move, we don't get worried. Right. This storm picked him up and threw him ten to about ten feet away from the house, and we, I was like, "Ooh, we need to go." <laughs> like, if Sam's moving, then there's a problem. Talk about a litmus test yeah. for for wind <laughs> exactly. wind speed and damage. So now our new thing is, if Sam moves, we go. <laughs> we go <I'm>... somewhere. <laughs> um, but it was interesting. Uh, thousands without power, tens of thousands. Um, ours was off for about six, fifteen, sixteen hours. Um, so her her father kindly brought the generator that he has we plugged the fridge up to it and uh a box fan and camped out in the living room because 
where our actual bedroom is, if there's no air running, like I can get the hottest room in the house. And we don't sleep if it's hot. I can't. I that, just can't sleep if it's hot. If I'm that's, hot. That's that's southern. The fan has so to be turned on. There has we to camped yeah. in the living room with nothing but conversation. <laughs> and I was like, and and she's not really a big camper, so when everything was saying going, you know, we were just sitting there using our regular phone internet to like play games and we were conversing and the f- fan was running and the fridge was the only thing plugged up and she goes oh my god i'm camping <laughs> like, this isn't camping she's like it's it a, is for me <laughs> well, i was going to say that'd be uh glamping for you yeah. and full-on camping, camping for, for her, her. Uh, she's like i don't do camping i'm camping now this is as close as i want to get <laughs> okay i'm inside my house i don't have to worry about any kind of critters creepy crawlies or anything like that i'm dealing with the heat as best as you mm-hmm. know much as i want to deal with it that's all right my wife would be the exact same yeah, way she's like this is camping i was like this is not camping she was like no i'm camping this is camping i hate it i hate it <laughs> She was like, if this is off any longer tomorrow after we wake up, we're staying at my parents' house or your parents' house because I will not camp a second night. Right. Uh, but luckily, uh, big shout out to Apple Watch and Electric. They worked literally around the clock, um, got help from surrounding counties, um, employees to come help clear out debris. Uh, there was, uh, I spoke to someone uh, who has a shop in downtown Dandridge and a massive tree that is hundreds of years old is now gone oh and And that's the stuff that yeah you're just like huh because dangerous is the second oldest city in tennessee yeah and it's like hundreds of years old tree just gone this but bad like, boy barely missed this big old bed and breakfast on all these stores. Yeah, someone during the Civil War could have yeah. propped up against that tree or sat yeah. up against it, wiped their you know brow. Yeah. What anybody you know? Yeah. Could have gone. Just, just gone. Just bye. Yeah. Um, but luckily, as as we know of, no, there was no severe injuries or deaths or anything. So that, that's very fortunate. Um, uh, yeah, that seems to be yeah. uh, common that we really didn't have any kind of major injuries of any kind from mm-hmm. this uh, this series of storms that did come through. Caused a lot of physical devastation, yeah. uh, but but thankfully no no lives were lost or anything yeah. like that. Thankfully, so. so yeah, it's it's storm season, East Tennesseeers. If you're listening to this, you know, hunker down. It's it's that time of year, and and be just prepared. as quickly as they can come up, they can be gone just as fast. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. And then sun be back out. It's like nothing happened. It, it's again. It's it's residual yeah. rainforest. I mean, it's crazy. We don't have the tropical stuff. It's a it's a residual rainforest instead of the tropical. Uh, thanks for giving the shout out to the electric company. Mm. I'll do the same for KUB. Uh, not only for KUB crews, but also to just the people in my community. Mm. Um, it is a rural community, so I mean, there's a lot of people out with tractors and chainsaws and stuff like that. And as soon as everything was done. They, they were them. out. They Helping were cutting trees that were falling down across the roads. Uh, anything that was on people's houses. Mm-hmm. Um, my wife had called me and said that people had already been by offering to, after they got done with getting roads cleared, to come back by and help get stuff cut up over at our place and get stuff moved and stuff like that. And these are people who haven't even met us yet. Yeah. I mean, admittedly, we've been in the house for several months now. Um, but still trying to get ourselves adjusted mm-hmm. and acclimated and get everything settled and all of that stuff. Uh, while, of course, you know, still two full-time jobs mm-hmm. going and everything mm-hmm. else. Um, but these people didn't care who we were or mm-hmm. anything like that. It was just a, a situation where they saw thing. people in yeah. need and, and were willing to come out and, and help them out. Yeah. So It's one of the things that makes us popular here in the South is we might – then they could be people like you know on monday through x day you disagree with on six or seven different topics but right shit hits the fan and a they common, help each other yeah common yeah uh, uh a common enemy as yeah. it were so to speak yeah. i don't want to use that yeah, you know in that sort of thing but i mean devastation is an enemy yeah and you know the community gets out and helps each other so i thought so that yeah was really thanks awesome. thanks to the many thanks to the folks of the the tuckahoe region mm-hmm. the tuckahoe creek out in in uh what would be east knoxville mm-hmm. so sweet so any other uh sad stories from from your work week since after all that 
Not really. Um, not from my perspective anyway, just because I did have to take a couple of days mm -hmm. off from working uh, just to be able to try to get that stuff taken care of. So I've not really experienced a whole mm -hmm. lot of stuff here at the, the store this week. Um, I d would like to take a moment, um, as long as there's not any kind of opposition to it, uh, just to let you know that one of our former employees has been going through some health problems mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, things, unfortunately, aren't looking too good, um, but we are looking to re-implement fully um, a change jar program mm -hmm. that we had done back in the past whenever there was the shortage on coins and stuff mm -hmm. like that back during COVID 2020 stuff like that we had started doing change roundup you know mm -hmm. where you would just round up to the nearest dollar that way we didn't have to worry about coinage but instead of profiting or just keeping any of mm -hmm. that what we had implemented was richard's change jar if you remember back from the first episode uh, richard frazier one of the co-owners of tennessee legend distillery that we did unfortunately lose to cancer mm -hmm. Um, we had started doing a change roundup in his honor to be able to use that money for uh, donation purposes to different types of organizations across Sevier County, uh, East Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, just in general. Um, but what we're looking to start using it for now is to provide a little bit of relief mm -hmm. for the former employee and her mother, who actually still does work for mm -hmm. us here at Tennessee Legend Distillery. So That's awesome. uh, if you do happen to come in at any point in time, um, just ask about donating, just rounding up whatever the change is on your purchase. Um, and we're gonna be trying to make sure that that money does get out to them. Awesome, awesome. What uh, about you? Well, I had a funny interaction. I, up here in the studio is office, also where my kind of office is. And, uh, you know, I, I've got my, my big water jug that I try to get two or three of those in in a work day because, you know, we should all work to drink more water and uh, all that stuff. And I also tend to, instead of, like, taking a lunch, like, leaving and all that, I'll, I'll bring things from the house to, like, just throw together in our break room and eat while working on something. So this one crew were here sampling uh, a few days ago, and... But there was one person, I guess they were the driver, they don't drink, sitting on the rocking chair out there. And they were here for a while, like 25, 30 minutes, just looking around, talking, just ambling. And so this woman sitting in this rocking chair saw me uh, come down with my big water jug down the steps and kind of come around. And I had put some, like, made some little, like, Hawaiian roll tuna sliders tuna and cheese sliders uh for lunch and brought my big water jug and then she saw me come back around the front with this plate and this jug and walk around and a few minutes later after i was done and done working on this thing i was like i need to go ahead and take the dish while it's on my mind or it'll stay up here till tomorrow so i then she sees me 15 minutes later <laughs> coming back with an empty plate and and my water jug to refill it and she was like excuse me and i said yes ma'am she was like do you live around the corner or something i said no she said i've seen you walk here with food and you turn the corner and then after i got up and looked at the corner i didn't see you i went well i walk up those steps there and my office is up there and she went oh and then i saw you come back around with an empty plate and i was like does he live in those hotels back there does he does he work here what is he doing and i was like no 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 i have an office upstairs i do work here i was just taking things to and from the break room for my lunch break and she's like oh i was baffled i was like huh my name's Chunk, and i'm going to feed sloth <laughs> yeah. i mean come on yeah we got other employees in the back that we have to feed them every now and then tennessee law you know hey, you <laughs> she was like i just thought it was interesting that this young man was 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 making circles like with plates and an empty plate and then a jug of water <laughs> it's like no nah, i'm upstairs <laughs> we're also not only a distillery but a food kitchen yes yeah, so we're a food kitchen too you got cots in the back that these employees can sleep on sometimes <laughs> believe it or not that's actually something that had been considered for one of the theater companies around town at mm. one point in time was to provide housing and stuff for the employees especially the the entertainers who mm -hmm. were brought in from you know all over the country and yeah. the world for that matter oh yeah uh 
but that didn't pan out. No. So. But <laughs> that's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Just the fact that <laughs> like, no, someone's just there. paying that much attention, like, <laughs> and then making that sort of like <laughs> that, that thought that process, I like. I was like, no. It makes it makes you wonder about the type of stuff that those people have experienced. To be like, how how did you how did you come to that? I was like, no, I just went up those steps. She's like, oh, I was like, yeah, there's a whole loft and and some, an office up there and some storage and all that. I was like, no, that's where I work. That's where I spend a lot of time. And she's like, oh, okay. I was just curious. I was like, no, I don't live here. <laughs> no. um, unlike our lives in the theater where we did actually yes. sleep there well, overnight yes. multiple times so uh-huh. and between shows and yeah that was an interesting and i have to give a shout out uh, i actually had a phone call with this individual after our meeting yesterday um uh someone that you should uh look up if you're on instagram and tiktok uh his name is Braden hall he's an upcoming country artist uh, actually, the last time we were visiting our Nashville location, uh, Tennessee Legend Distillery, 1310 Clinton Street in the old Marathon Village, uh, go check them out. Tell them I said hi. Uh, we were, I was walking around downtown Nashville taking some photos with some of our bottles with things in the background and stuff like that. And I uh, ran to this guy who just had this, this speaker that he was carrying with him. And he saw me with the camera and he said, hey. You want to take a picture of me? And I was like, oh, sure, why not? <laughs> Who are you? And uh, he was like, I don't know. And he introduced himself, and we talked for a little bit, and he played me this upcoming song that he had coming out. Uh, you can find his music on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your music. His uh, newest one coming out is called Honky Tonk Therapy. And it is, as the kids say, a bop. No cap? No cap. Is it straight bussin'? Straight bussin'. Nice. Absolutely. It is a fun, upbeat, and I'm not a huge family fan of modern country, um, but it, it is an upbeat, fun song. And we got to talking and shooting messages back and forth over the last few weeks and had this idea about Tennessee Legend Distillery partnering with him when he shoots the music video for Honky Tonk Therapy. Oh, heck yeah. Uh, so there are some things in the work. Uh, check him out. It is uh, Braden... Uh, underscore or it's Braden underscore Lee underscore Hull on TikTok Uh, so give him a follow tell him you heard about it from the Between Two Barrels podcast and Tennessee Legend Distillery Uh, so a big shout out to Braden he's a talented young man and I you know he's a hard worker too so if you keep up with him on his social media great great voice also great persona um, so, I told you this is funny. I had this in the notes before I was asked. So, I had this notes planned out for this episode and, and doing this booze vocabulary word already planned. And I took my wife out f- to dinner last night. And just while we were listening to last week's episode, our interview with Justin, she said, Why don't we call it spirits? And she's like, that's I, a tr- really I good truly question. don't know. Why do we call it spirits? And I was like, you know, that's funny. I have them all laid out in the notes. It's on the next episode, define and tell the story of spirits. So that segue leads us into this booze vocabulary word, spirits. So why do we call it spirits? So alchemy and distillation date back to the earliest times when the world word spirits was first documented and used. Alcohol was once thought to have mystical properties, and some people probably still think that today. (laughs) Um, It was once thought to have mystical properties that could turn true common metals into gold. This magical essence, which was believed to be a substance's life force, was referred to as having a spirit. I didn't know Da Vinci was a distiller. Yeah, Da Vinci, man. Uh, I'm sure Dan Brown knew. (laughs) (laughs) So, whiskey, gin, and vodka are just a few examples of refined alcohol beverages that have come to be referred to as spirits over time. These drinks were thought to hold both the spirit of life force that gave them their power, as well as the essence of the plant or grain from which they were derived. Uh, Today, any alcoholic liquid that has been distilled as opposed to fermented is referred to as a spirit. So, that's one thing. Uh, Mm. Alcohol is produced when yeast breaks down sugar into ethanol through the fermentation process. Uh, Alcohol is removed from water and other impunities in the fermenting liquid 
through the distillation process. Spirits elevated alcohol content and distinctive flavor comes from distillation. So in that instance where Justin was talking to us about last week, Mm -hmm. that after the corn is cracked down or whatever the grains are that are cracked down and are mixed with the yeast, it goes Mm -hmm. to the fermentation process, that then goes into the still for Mm -hmm. distillation. And basically what they are doing is cooking off all the impurities, Mm -hmm. turning the alcohol from a liquid into a vapor, Mm -hmm. And then the condensed vapor is more alcohol, less water, or any other kind of impurities. And going off of the descriptions so far that has come as a result of spirits is basically just saying it's taken the the life force, the Mm -hmm. essence, and the quote-unquote power Mm -hmm. of what that grain was. And that is what is now in the bottle. Yeah, and it's interesting that you use the term vapor because... A lot of paranormal investigators call spirits a vaporous form. Vapor, yeah. Yeah, a vapor. Free-floating vapors. Uh, So spirits are frequently more costly than other alcoholic beverages like beer and wine because they are produced through the distillation process. Now, there has been an evolution of the term spirits. Uh, Whiskey, gin, vodka, rum, tequila, and brandy are just a few of the alcoholic beverages that fall under the umbrella word spirit, which has expanded over time. Uh, Depending on the ingredients and distillation process, each of these spirits has a distinct taste and its own personality, which we will dive into more as this this podcast goes on, individual spirits that we work with. Is there a difference between spirits and liquor? The term spirits and liquor are often actually used interchangeably to refer to any alcoholic beverage that has been distilled. However, some people use the term liquor to refer specifically to distilled beverages that are not aged, such as vodka and gin. So okay. it's even evolved to spirits are aged. All right, so at one point during the early goings, any distilled alcohol referred to as a spirit, mm-hmm. but like anything, as time progresses, things get more refined mm-hmm. and defined. So now it's a situation to where a an aged alcohol mm-hmm. is referred to as a spirit so your like a bourbon. your bourbons yeah. uh aged whiskeys mm-hmm. uh even agave uh, mm-hmm. an aged tequila anything like that is going to be a spirit whereas something that does not go through any kind of cask or barrel aging process is just liquor. a liquor why are spirits more expensive than other types of alcohol because of the extra steps distillation takes a manpower b time uh, so obviously, if you're using that stuff, you know you've got to overcharge for people's handiwork and the time it takes. So right, mainly like with, time with is, any other kind yes. of of uh, sold product mm-hmm. or manufactured product. Yeah, uh, you have to take into account all aspects of the production of the final product mm-hmm. and the costs, labor costs, material costs, everything to determine. Pricing. what the pricing of that item should be so yeah the additional steps that have to mm-hmm. go through that and and the base for bourbon is two years like it has to be aged yes. for at least a minimum of two years but there are some that spend 10 14 20 50 yeah. i've seen like reports of 100 year old scotch yeah especially you know. like in the highlands of like scotland and yeah. ireland they have hundreds of of years into their bourbons and things like that and their irish whiskey so one of the other questions we get a lot uh, a couple of them is how should we store them are they and especially today as we talked about allergens are they gluten free so not all spirits are gluten free and this is something that we kind of highlighted with justin Mm -hmm. last week Um, spirits that are made from grains such as whiskey vodka Things like that may contain gluten unless they have been specifically distilled or filtered to remove it. Mm -hmm. Um, However, many spirits that are made from other ingredients such as tequila and rum, um, because you're using an agave plant or a uh, for rum for tequila, of course, and then for rum, uh, sugar or Mm -hmm. sugar cane, molasses, stuff like that. They don't contain gluten, Mm -hmm. so you're not going to have to worry about that type of stuff. The fun thing about ours is a lot of our products at Tennessee Legend are corn. 
Yes. So a big statistic of ours is gluten-free. And Naturally. we actually do have that labeling, letting mm-hmm. everyone know. Uh, and as Justin did refer on last week's episode, there are some products that could potentially have gained a gluten molecule or protein after the fact with a flavored added or stuff like that. But of course, on our products, those are denoted it'll, it'll as say. to whether or yeah. not it, that is the case or not. And that's something else. Um, just as a friendly reminder... Uh, Whenever you are looking into flavored products and those of you that Mm -hmm. do have allergens or allergy concerns and stuff like that, that Tennessee Legend is using the molecules that are more for the aromatics Mm -hmm. or what creates the flavor, not so much the actual protein molecule that makes up the the body of whatever the item is. Um, So we're we're using the the many years of scientific work of others mm-hmm. to, to make our products a lot more uh, enjoyable to a, a larger spectrum of people mm-hmm. that would typically try to avoid things that had words like peanut or mm-hmm. chocolate or whatever the case may be on it um, that they normally wouldn't be able to consume. So, so how, would, how would you answer if someone said, how should I store my spirits? Alcohol of any kind has two main enemies air and heat Mm. so cool dry places are the best things to do make sure that whatever it is is stored don't allow any kind of open air to get to it because the alcohol will dissipate and heat just speeds up that process so like wine any other kind of spirit you're going to want to keep it in a cool dry place yes much to a lot of uh, growing up myths and other quote-unquote legends about drinking uh, a lot of people are like, can I mix different spirits? Oh. oh, light and dark. Oh, don't do that. And a lot of that's been busted. Yes, there there are a lot of different things. It's typically the base grain that's mm. used to make the product. So, like, if you drink a moonshine that is typically made from majority corn, mm-hmm. and then you go to drink a corn-based whiskey, you're not really... Mixed, crossing the mixing, strings too bad. Yeah, you're yeah. not really mixing anything because it's the base grains. Mm-hmm. Now, if you were to start drinking Añejo barrel-aged tequila and then you want to switch over to vodka, then, yeah, you're going to have a problem. You're going to get a little, sick this. Get a little bit of the bubble guts, probably. Yeah, just because you've got those different grains that are mixing together and your body's going to be reacting to it in a different way. Just because you have those different molecules that have entered your body and that's going to you know create some some different things just like the same thing as far as uh the old saying liquor and beer with liquor and beer yeah Uh, liquor to beer you're in the clear beer to liquor couldn't be sicker right right and that is one of those things because you're going from a distilled product to a fermented product Mm -hmm. um and not to mention with beer you've got all the uh so heavy um carbohydrates mm. the the carbonation like all of this stuff is is playing a factor into it whereas whenever it comes to distilled spirits the majority of all that stuff is gone yeah uh, you will have some carbohydrates because of the sugars and stuff like that but you're not going to have any carbonation or anything like that yeah any kind of gaseous buildup that you would wind up getting from beer mm-hmm. it's like you can chug a beer you're going to wind up burping oh you yeah. know you're going to booger from revenge of the nerds <laughs> whereas whenever you drink a, a mixed drink i mean yeah. you're, you're not gonna have that type of yeah. stuff so exactly i mean it's just and also how your personal body chemistry works and that can be said for any other type of recreational product yeah um your body's going to react to different types of things different ways that's why some people get violent whenever they drink tequila mm-hmm. as opposed to getting really happy and chipper and lovey is Mm -hmm. how your individual body chemistry reacts to the different types of spirits it's a and it goes along the same lines of food too because like you know they always tell you like you know if you're having hot wings the last thing you need to do is is eat ice cream afterwards because it's dairy you know and that hot sauce mixing with that i was like uh, yeah but at 20 i could do that right now body chemistry's changed i'm older I'm taking omeprazole every morning. (laughs) Right. Uh, That also, kind of like the alcohol, depends on you, really. Yeah. So. um, You have to find out what your, find your lane Mm -hmm. and stick to it. You can venture out every once in a while. You can take some side road trips. Ignore the day off the next day. Ignore ways. (laughs) You know what I mean. (laughs) 
the GPS isn't always right. <laughs> it's true. Sometimes technology will drive you right into a lake. It truly will. Absolutely will. Uh, got another question actually for you. Um, mm. Is it safe to drink spirits that have been stored for a long time? And this isn't a question more like the typical storage, like mm. uh, uh, like if it's been in a cask or in a barrel or anything for that. For And we're not talking like 10, 15 years. This is stuff that like you went to your grandma's house yeah. and they have some potential rot gut mm. that's been sitting in the, the back of the cabinet underneath the sink for... 60, years. 70 <laughs> years, whatever the case may be. Um, in general, most spirits are not going to spoil or go bad because it is alcohol. It's, um, it's preserved. Yeah, it's preserved. Yeah. Uh, but the flavor can change uh, if they're stored improperly. Uh, however, spirits that have been stored for a long time can develop a musty flavor. Uh you know, like what you would describe as like the smell of must in storage. The taste of must and dust can also be there, but it's still safe to drink. You know, the flavor profile may change, but at the same time, it's alcohol, especially if it's like a vodka or whiskey or something. It's not going to be bad, just a little older. So David Lee Murphy knew what he was talking about whenever he was singing about there might be a little dust on the bottle, yes. but don't let it fool you about what's inside. Absolutely. Nice. Absolutely. Uh, so in conclusion, although the term spirits may have first been used to refer to the ethereal essence of alcohol, it is now used to refer to a broad range of distilled drinks, each with a distinctive flavor and personality. So the more you know. Hope you, if you if you learned something there, to, and you can use it in a future trivia qu- answer or stumping someone else, tell them you heard about it at Between Two Barrels podcast. Uh, I know we said we weren't going to do this on every episode, but considering we were talking about uh, a very special legend here in the Tennessee area, we have a cocktail for this episode. It's called the Squatchberry Twist. Yes, and it looks delicious. Mm-hmm. Um, you'd actually take an ounce and a half of our Tennessee Wildman Vodka. For those of you who have been longtime customers, uh, you'll recognize the flavor of this vodka, mm-hmm. or actually lack thereof, lack because our vodka has no flavor. Uh, mm-hmm. I personally have called it our magic water. Mm. It disappears in anything you put it in. Uh, we've also heard uh, 80 proof sipping water. 80 proof sipping water. Uh, just because the fact that our vodka is pretty much odorless, tasteless. Uh, mixes with and anything, dangerous. just like any kind of vodka. <laughs> um, but this is a fun one, the Squatchberry Twist, just an ounce and a half of our Tennessee Wild Man Vodka. And what I was getting to with that uh, recognition of the product is the only thing we did was put a new fun label mm-hmm. on it. Uh, we had the generic vodka label on there for ever since we first opened. And we decided to to use, uh, actually this is the owner, Vicky, one of the owners, mm-hmm. Vicky's... Um, pet projects in trying to get a a more fun moniker for our vodka mm-hmm. uh, for our house vodka and she has a uh, an affinity for sasquatch yes, bigfoot uh, wild man if you would um so we started doing some research of course and then found out tennessee wild man mm-hmm. uh is the tennessee version of what sasquatch or bigfoot would be um, of course, if you travel further south, it's skunk ape. Mm-hmm. Further north, northwest you go, uh, squash, becomes squash or, of course, Bigfoot. You get into any kind of... Uh, uh, you got Yahweh, snow, Yeti. Snowy, yeah, or yeah. Asia, you yeah. get into the Yahweh or Yeti. Um, but this Squatch Berry Twist cocktail, before I get off on another <laughs> tangent, we'll go ahead and get the entirety of the cocktail. Uh, that's going to be an ounce and a half of TLD's Tennessee Wild Man Vodka. Uh, two ounces of cranberry juice go ahead and fill a shaker with ice and some orange juice and get all that stuff poured in there shake it generously pour it into a cocktail glass of choice and you can garnish it with a lime Uh, you can do lemon lemon, orange orange, anything that you want to do as far as that Uh, even drop a cherry or cranberry something like that on the top of it and enjoy it because like i said that vodka disappears in Mm -hmm. anything that you put it in uh, much like the elusive wild man, it's it's it, it comes and goes before you know it. Champion, champion of Tennessee. 
Absolutely, hide and seek champion since forever, forever. <laughs> um, and then, like we said last time, and this is going to be for any time, uh, any episode. If you have any cocktails or drinks that you would like to make with any of our products, um, not necessarily specifically with our products, mm-hmm. but just including our products, uh, specifically that Wild Man Vodka, though, uh, or any of the other Tennessee Legend spirits, just reach out to us via email at tldtube23 at gmail.com. That's tldtube23 at gmail.com. Absolutely. Uh, and speaking of some other local legends, uh, we've recently had some awesome partnerships with the Rainforest Adventure uh, Zoo here in Sevierville, Tennessee. And due to them and some of the knowledge of other people they know, we have been able to do some killer photo shoots with some of our products. The King Snake uh, two year old bourbon whiskey, we actually got to go over there and took our dear friend Bryson, who is our personal professional photographer. Um, and do some photo shoots with our bourbon being uh, coiled with and other king snakes just hanging out in their captivity getting close to our bourbon whiskey and some of those pictures have been shown on our social media Mm -hmm. um, and we've still got more to come for instance and the way that that he worded it at rainforest that bill worded it is he had some friends down in texas for our other with bourbon whiskey, the cane break, which, if you don't know what a cane break is, it is kind of an Appalachian term for Eastern Diamondback type for a rattlesnake. Of, for a rattlesnake. Yeah. Uh, he said, Yeah, I've got some friends down in Texas who can, his words, manipulate rattlesnakes for a cool photo shoot with your cane break. And I went, I, I don't want to manipulate yeah, rattlesnakes. I, I don't want to know how the the process of manipulating a mean, rattlesnake vicious, goes. Poisonous rattlesnake. I, I grew up watching enough wrestling yeah. to know that Stone Cold Steve Austin, the rattlesnake, yeah, uh, and his name come from what the attitude yeah. of a rattlesnake. a rattlesnake would be, and I, I, it, no, it may be fake as far as the scripting and yeah. stuff like that but that persona that character that creation is aptly named is aptly named for sure and i don't want to do anything to try to manipulate a rattlesnake a rattlesnake <laughs> in any capacity like i won't even manipulate a little gardener snake that's not going to really hurt me manipulate i'm just like snakes can stay over there i'll stay over here i ain't manipulating a slithering little thing that can bite me like, right I, I wouldn't manipulate a bee I wouldn't manipulate a spider. Let them have their world, okay? And we'll just we'll live alongside. Coexist. We'll coexist. But uh, those uh, cane break photos will be up soon on our social media. So a huge shout out to Bill and the Rainforest Adventure Zoo for helping us out with that. And uh, we are actually going to step away from a quick break. And uh, you can hear more about the fantastic people at Rainforest Adventure Zoo. This segment of Between Two Barrels is brought to you by the Smoky Mountain Rainforest Adventures. Located in the heart of the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee near Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge lies the Rainforest Adventures Zoo, which is open year-round with lots to see and do. Themed by one of the nation's finest zoological contractors, a former Animal Kingdom zoologist of Disney World, the Rainforest Adventure Zoo features over 600 live animals representing over 130 species. It is home to unique and beautiful creatures from both tropical and temperate climates alike, including reptiles, birds, mammals, and even the ever so popular and exotic axolotl. Book your visit today at rfadventures.com or stop by and see them at 109 NASCAR Drive in Sevierville, Tennessee. And when you do, tell them Tennessee Legend Distillery sent you. Welcome back, Legends. We are now discussing our topic of the episode, and that is the elusive Tennessee Wildman, a.k.a. 
Bigfoot, aka Sasquatch, aka whatever you call him. Uh, if one mom, were, mom, yes, <laughs> if you're related to Sasquatch, <laughs> uh, if one were to search the internet for Tennessee cryptids in general, uh, not much would immediately come up because the South is so lousy with them. Uh, it's hard to gain recognition when this this side of Tennessee is just three hours away from Mothman, who is we've got huge. Yeah, Blair Witch. Blair Witch. We've got old Green Eyes out of Chattanooga. We've got countless ghosts and cryptids that cross over with state borders. So it's really hard to find a specific cryptid to the state of Tennessee. You're going to find more information on this than most other cryptids because. Uh, it's become many of our locals' favorites. The Tennessee Wild Man. Not to mention also now the focal point of multiple conventions. Yes. As it were, uh, here in East Tennessee, mm-hmm. specifically the Smoky Mountains. Um, we are now on our third year and what I think is now the fifth or sixth Bigfoot convention mm-hmm. um, here in the Smokies. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's it's definitely popular. All over the place. Uh, for those of you that may not know, uh, the Tennessee Wildman is a cryptid local to the east side of Tennessee and could be considered the southern cousin of Bigfoot. Uh, not, of course, as far south as the skunk ape getting down into yeah. uh, South Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, Florida, stuff like that. Um, but he is described as a very tall humanoid figure that is either light brown or dark orange. There you go for all you Vol fans. Go Vols. Uh, while reported colorations differ, almost every reported sighting of him has been the same. Someone was in the woods or during some of the earlier sightings of the 70s uh, would be in homes close to the woods uh, when either their sight, hearing, or sense of smell picked up on something odd. Then he was there or they realized he had always been there. What differentiates him from Bigfoot is that he seems to be more human and less ape-like, as well as having shaggier hair, perhaps more akin to the northern Sasquatch as opposed mm-hmm. to Bigfoot. So this one seems more like a, from the, like a more humanoid orangutan. So the cousin of what you would call Gigantopithecus. Bigfoot, Sasquatch, right. the OG of myth and legend. This one's more of a cousin. Right. And more humanoid. I don't know if that would be scarier. If right, it like, was more it human or is it more ape that's scarier? And I think the more human version would be scarier because it would be like something out of a H.P. Uh, Lovecraft movie. Right. I mean, you're going to de- be potentially dealing with something that has more understanding, mm-hmm. larger capacity for thought. Ugh. Uh, um, problem solving whatever the case usage of tools whatever the case may be pettiness <laughs> <laughs> right i'm just gonna do this out of spite uh so the origins of the tennessee Wildman goes way back to the 1800s in mcnary county tennessee one of the stories is that a circus freak show man somehow captured the beast and put him on display in a cage where everyone could see him for exploitation until it finally broke free I've seen tons of movies that started out that way. Uh, the description of the Tennessee Wildman is much similar in appearance to Sasquatch, but more human, which again, I think is scarier than more ape. Right. Uh, supposedly has either dark gray hair or dark ginger hair, is about seven feet tall, and is always accompanied with piercing red eyes. Ooh. Now, I don't know if that's a situation to where it's like when light shines on it, mm. like a lot of different Ooh. animals do, yeah, the different shine. colorations uh, when light's shown, uh, or if that's just full-on, evil in the dark, <laughs> evil glowing Full red, on red eyes. eyes. Uh, it is known to spout out a disturbing war cry that can frighten anyone that hears it and has a horrible smell that's reminiscent of, as we mentioned before, Florida's skunk ape. And I can only imagine if there is something that is, like, I know if I'm out in the sun for a long period Mm -hmm. of time, I start getting a distinct odor. Yes. Um, And apart from on top of my head, which is yeah, baby butt smooth, (laughs) um, I'm a fairly hairy guy. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm probably <laughs> more closely related to the Tennessee <laughs> wild man, than even humans. though I'm originally <laughs> from South Carolina, uh, than a majority of people. Um, but I know, like I said, I know I can get pretty foul whenever I've been working outside all day. Uh, yeah. Case in point, working on the tree cleanup that we had to mm-hmm. deal with earlier this week. Um, but I can only imagine the type of smell that for something that's completely covered in hair and that has doesn't the go humanistic indoors. qualities <laughs> does not have the luxury of of soap of <laughs> any kind because we don't have any of those soap plants that no. you see on social media no. where someone just goes up and squeezes yeah. the the blade of the plant yeah, that, that shampoo, ain't out here. basically um but yeah uh also said to be very aggressive in behavior and could possibly be the arch enemy of sasquatch ironically uh often fighting over territory um, not surprisingly the wild man possesses great strength agility and speed and there have been many groups of men that have gone out hunting for the creature, but all the time, usually they don't find anything or something traumatizing happens. Uh, the monster is known to have a strange targeting obsession with dogs and women. And many women have come out to say the wild man had attempted to snatch them up and carry them away. Yeah. Ugh. That's terrifying. <laughs> So that, maybe that's what happened. Maybe that's where I came from. I'm technically, possibly, I'm adopted. You're possibly adopted. That's that, <laughs> you that's never what, know. That's what we're gonna put to go with. Um, the last known wild man sighting actually took place over 20 years ago near Elizabethton, Tennessee. A man by the name of Rob Phillips, along with his cousin, were on a night hike to Bee Cliffs. Through the rain, they noticed something strange in the forest. Everything had become completely silent. The sound of a snapping twig broke the silence, followed by a horrible, inhuman scream, unlike anything the hikers had ever heard. The men fled separately through the darkened wood, with Philip soon finding safety behind a tree. It wasn't long after that that he spotted the wild man clinging to a nearby tree about 15 feet away. Rob heard his cousin break for the hill, and he followed suit. Philip's account corresponds slightly with the initial tales of the Tennessee wild man. He was described as a stout, about nine feet tall, with red beady eyes, a set of claws, and a horrible, pervasive stink that Phillips compared to the stench of a dead animal. Ugh. Now, it is unlikely that the Tennessee wild man has lived almost 150 years in the Tennessee mountains. It may be more assumed that uh, that more than one of these creatures exists? Or could the creature sighting in the Bee Cliffs area be something else entirely? It wasn't only Tennessee that this creature has been sighted either, since some reports also come from our neighboring state of Kentucky. Now, while doing a little research into the wild man, I knew that finding credible sources was going to be a little difficult uh, for many reasons. Uh, so when I saw that there was uh, a, a fandom wiki page of the Tennessee Wild Man, uh, I wasn't really expecting much. Um, I did want I didn't want to exclude it. I know there's a lot of wiki beliefs and stuff like that, but uh, what I did find was that in the comments sections were several people having claimed to see him as well. More recently in 2019 and 2020, with one user. Omega Gruden, uh, saying, does the Tennessee wild man make a Neanderthal or caveman-like sound? Because in early of June or July of 2019 at Oak Ridge, I heard this voice, which sounds like an angry Neanderthal or caveman. Then two or three seconds later, I heard something walking on the grass, and it sounded like it was two legs. So, my first question, what does the sound of a Neanderthal or caveman sound like? (laughs) Grunting, uh, general gestures. See, the the caveman, the the calling it a scary battle cry squeal sounds scary to me than caveman or Neanderthal noises. Right. Neanderthal or caveman, I'm thinking like, oh, it doesn't formulate words, it's trying to say something, it's uh, uh, more of like uh, when when Scooby tries to say certain things, okay, yeah, you know, that's what I'm thinking. Or of. or um, 
the most present thing would be a, a infant a yes. toddler that hasn't Badly. learned how to speak yet. And you know. they're they're in their brain they're saying something, but all that's actually coming out is that yeah. that what they yeah. could be saying is it's a really nice evening out, and I thoroughly enjoy this walk. But what we're hearing is this terrifying caveman noise. Right. <laughs> um, Come back. I'm just trying I'm to just help trying you. trying to have a conversation, man. <laughs> oh, my God. It's Bigfoot. <laughs> um, and, and there's also some other places that you can learn a little bit about the Tennessee Wild Man. Uh, there is a whole episode on the Tennessee Wild Man on Season 3, Episode 2 of the show Monsters and Mysteries in America. Is that a Josh Gates? Uh, I think it is. Because oh, wow, okay. I'm pretty sure he I was just le- <laughs> he, they stopped Destination Truth. Right. And I know that in um, Discovery America, the channel, or Destination America, the channel, he had another show. Okay. And I think this is it. Because I actually am a fan of, fan of Josh yeah, Gates' me presentation too. on stuff. Uh, yeah. Him and Jeremy Wade for mm-hmm. River Monsters, two of my favorite shows to oh, watch. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so, uh, naturally, if we're talking Bigfoot and Tennessee Wildman, and any time we're talking cryptids, uh, you got to talk about our personal beliefs. And yes, and as w- reading through this, um, especially with um, uh, Mr. Phillips' account that we were talking about, Rob Phillips, uh, while this is taking place over 20 years ago, that actually kind of lines up time-wise with what I describe as one of my experiences. Um, mine actually probably took place a little bit longer ago. Mm-hmm. I would have been 15, 16. I'm 42 now, so we're looking at uh, several years ago. Okay. Um, but it was a situation where a friend of mine and myself, um, because reasons, mm. I'm going to say, um, I mean, you can use the whole young and dumb or young and stupid all you want to. Um, I'm just going to say because reasons. Uh, We were, it was during the summer. Mm -hmm. Um, We had spent all day hanging out at the lake, fishing, swimming, whatever. Um, At the time, I lived within walking distance, just a few hundred yards, two to three hundred yards from Douglas Lake at the time. And completely surrounded by either farmland or TVA property. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was back in there. Uh, Mm -hmm. The closest, like, actual, I guess, what would be mainstay, like, building of any kind other than homes was the uh, pump house, what actually pumps water out of Douglas Lake and provides Mm -hmm. it to be cleaned and everything else and sourced for... Uh, your regular water yeah. throughout the city of Sevierville. Um But surprisingly and oddly enough, it had gotten to be 10, 11 o'clock at night. And for whatever reason, we thought it would be a good idea at that point in time to go out into the front yard and work out. Huh? Yeah, we were lifting weights, curls, bench presses, shoulder presses, okay. anything and everything. So... We had swapped, like, I had gotten off of the the bench from doing bench press, and uh, I didn't take any of the weight off of there, and a friend a little bit smaller than me, so I was able to push up a little bit heavier weight than he was, um, and I went off, you know, picked up something else as far as weights, started doing curls or whatever at the time, like I said, we're, I don't know why, 10, 11 o'clock at night, and we decide after a long-ass day of swimming and fishing and everything else. Ooh. You got the cardio. You said I'm 15, 16 years old. I'm, yeah. oh, we're going to work Let's out. Throw on some iron. Um, so I'm sitting there. I'm, you know, curling, lifting yeah. these weights, and I hear, <laughs> I'm like, just kind of looked over my shoulder, <laughs> like, thinking that he's sitting there trying to push up this weight that I had on the the bench press bar and he's you know he had dropped yeah. back down and was pushing up again and I'm like alright I don't think that was it so I'd turn back and I'm focusing on doing the curls again switch from the right arm to the left arm you know cause we only had the one yeah. uh, dumbbell and I hear Bruh! I'm like I turned and I actually said dude I know that's not that much weight are you having that much of a struggle he's like what are you talking about like that grunt 
you having some problems getting that weight up? And he's like, I didn't grunt. It's like, okay, so rack the weight, stop for a minute. And then just sitting there a minute later, hearing some rustling and some... (laughs) Just some grumblings. And then a little bit of moonlight coming through. I mean, it wasn't a full moon, but a little bit of moonlight. Okay, if it was a full moon, I mean, then that would completely take away any sort of accreditation yeah. to the story. Um, but a little bit of light coming through. So, I mean, you can see some shadows, shapes, mm-hmm. stuff like that. And we see uh, uh, what looked to be just a rounded top what would be like a head of something Mm -hmm. no protruding ears or anything that we could tell anyway Uh, because this is just over into what would be a tree line probably 30 40 yards away from us Uh, not quite half a football field but Mm -hmm. you know some some distance and then we're like okay what is this and then a little bit of reflection caught some eyes not anything red, mm. uh, like most accounts uh, happen to be with the Tennessee Wild Man, uh, but it was a, a, a orangish, I want to say, uh, color um, from the light. And then we both picked up something to arm ourselves because you know because again lived out in the we're woods. gonna fight this thing we're gonna fight this thing i mean we're already pumping iron at <laughs> yeah, i'm already in 10 the 30 11 o'clock at night i'm all jacked up so, on mountain dew <laughs> right uh so it was a situation where like we're gonna go go after whatever if something comes after we're we're ready so one of us had a baseball bat one of us had like a, a axe Jeez. in our hand so i mean we're we're ready to go toe to toe with with whatever this may be and we start getting closer and closer and closer to the, the area where this is, is rustling, making sounds and stuff like that. And at this point in time, we're seeing the eyes in the top of the head. Is it probably about four and a half, five feet? Yeah. Um, is where we're seeing this. Well, we get up closer and whatever this is, still grunting making some <laughs> sounds that like don't come any closer so it's <laughs> so, uh, starting to get to to that type of that type of sound um we get closer and then whatever gets up to like the seven eight nine foot height so it's like it was squatting. like it was squatting and its squat was at four and a half five feet like hunkered down almost like ape-like bent over you know in that sort of posture and then it was and i next thing i know i'm turn around (laughs) i turn around and my friend is shutting the door to the house (laughs) and i get to the door and i'm (laughs) and nothing i mean no no rattling of the windows no coming up to the house beating on the porch or or on the door yeah none of that other experience but as soon as that last grunt or growl or whatever the case may be like i said i i don't know when he turned around and took off i turned around and like i said he's shutting the main door (laughs) after that grunt i don't know if he just got up was behind me or whatever i'm focused i'm looking at you know locking eyes with whatever this thing is i've got I can't remember bat or hatchet, what whichever one I had. I'm just in swing position, ready to go, and and it's like what the <laughs> turn around and just bolt. And as like I said, as soon as I turn around and I'm looking 180 yeah. degrees from what I was just looking at, he's already shutting the door. Like, and I, this is like I, I said, 40, happened, 50 yards away. I don't know why he kept going further. <laughs> So, yeah, um, and then, of course, I've had some other friends tell me some yeah. some other experiences and things that they've experienced out around the Douglas Lake area. I mean, and that is a large body of water. You've got all kinds of food sources and everything Deer. else out there. So, I mean, there's there if, if something like that does exist, I mean, I don't know if it was a bear. I mean, but the, the and the same common things, the, the smell, like a mm. horrid smell, um, something that almost smells like death. But, I mean, if... If any kind of animal that that feeds on carrion or anything like that, I mean, or even uh, uh, actual meat, 
mm-hmm. and all of that stuff is going to radiate. Radiate yeah. will create a smell, but yeah. Um, like yeah, it was it was rough. It was it was a nasty smell. Wow. Um, no broken twigs. Didn't find any kind of hair or anything like that or anything after going the next morning and looking in the area. No. No evidence of any kind of real deep footprints mm. or anything like that, but it was. It, it could have been a bear. It could have been wild man. It could have been. But it was an experience. But it was it was an experience, and uh, uh, as a teenager, <laughs> a a, and and still recalling this, I mean, it, the more you think about it, it does seem more likely that it could have been a a traditional, you know, a black bear mm. or something like that. Um, typically black bears in the area wouldn't get that tall even standing on their hind legs, but I mean, it is possible. Yeah. Uh, but then of course this is the Smoky Mountains and the Smoky Mountains for whenever this was Pangea mm. is the same mountain ranges that would be in Scotland. Scotland. Yeah. And we know about all the stuff that, that goes on. So, I mean, at one point in time, this is all shared land. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the same things that are that are potentially there are here and vice versa here or there. Well, and that's so. the, the one big thing that I always point to uh, when, to some skeptics with, with Sasquatch and stuff like that is th- this isn't a new thing. I mean, there are cave drawings and Norse literature and Norse accounts and ancient... Egypt accounts and, and not ancient Egypt but like you know ancient time accounts of these type of creatures mm-hmm. so I mean this isn't like a oh you know just because of the Patterson Gimling thing it's a new no these are things that have been documented for thousands of yeah, years and, and what could just literally be a, a race a race that, that link between mm-hmm. early yeah eight, the, the transition from ape into Mm-hmm. man into homo erectus yes and and you know between all the account and that, that's the thing that that i would tell a skeptic is it's a it's not just one thing like it said you know it's not a 150 year old tennessee wild man the one bigfoot is not thousands of years old no no oh, gosh no well i mean even in this it's talking about how they had a penchant mm-hmm. for targeting women mm-hmm. to take them away i mean it's almost like it knows that reason? this is the that, that's what i was I alluding know. to i mean it's that's like we know that that is the female of a species mm-hmm. and that yeah. something in the in the in the brain pan is calculating and saying that that's, that's how it continues. that can be yeah, yeah uh, recreation could. in that aspect um i have not had like a personal physical visual experience um and I still, I still believe that it's absolutely a possibility. And my main thing that I point to for the possibility of this thing existing is our ocean. There's still stuff discovered every 20, 30 years because of technology's change that went unnoticed. Oh, and for I think sure. if an entity, if a creature, if something doesn't want to be found, it will not be found. Oh, gosh, no. Ape-like, fish-like birds i mean we're still finding new like geniuses of insects and birds that we did not know existed so why that are either something that has existed for a long period of time Mm -hmm. or is a mutation Uh, of something that either has gone extinct Mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be and even things that we had thought to have been extinct are being discovered just because of their migration patterns, mm-hmm. they were trying to get away from whatever was killing people them. Yeah. or or civilization or whatever the case yeah. may be. And if it doesn't I mean, want to like, be found, it won't be found. It, not to get too far off topic, and this is something that we could potentially talk about on a future episode. Um, I occasionally watch Joe Rogan podcasts mm-hmm. or listen to Joe Rogan podcasts. And he had a guy on, and I've actually watched this entire episode uh, on YouTube, and of course would be listening to it as well. Um, but he is—he talks about trying to find a dinosaur in the Congo, like there is a brontosaurus I've, I've, that people yes. have seen, and that this stuff is documented. 
that that there is still a living dinosaur in the Congo. Well, that's the belief behind Nessie, is it's just a race of of uh, a plesiosaur. Plesiosaur, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if if this eight nine foot ape creature doesn't want to be found by, it's not going to. No, it's going to do anything and everything possible, whether it's when it eats, where it eats, when it goes to the water. It these right this race of ape like creatures have had thousands of years to develop this mentality and mm-hmm. see what we're doing as humans how we grow and they're like oh, right. well, we're just gonna yeah. you know so i've never had like a physical experience except for a sound i was and again i, I could easily chalk this up to there are people who do things that go squatching you know like oh, yeah. finding bigfoot that show and then mm-hmm. uh old friend of mine who still plays the mayor at Hatfield McCoy Dinner Show, Cousin Timmy, yeah. goes squatching, goes Bigfoot hunting. And I was in the woods in, uh, not in the woods, but like on the edge of a woods at the, getting this, this honey straws at Cade's Cove. And from out of nowhere, this was years ago, with uh, she who must not be named. And... Um, that's another story for another day. <laughs> and uh, we're at, it's, it's that time when Cade's Cove, they have events every now and then, you know, like candle making. People are dressed as pioneers. And I'm get, waiting oh, yeah. in line to get these honey straws. And from behind us in this really, like, vast wooded area, because it all is, you know, the Smoky Mountains. Right. It's just this loop that people can inhabit in a vast little patch of the Smoky Mountains. Which is is massive. 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 And from behind, I just hear like this... Like this squeal. Right. And I was like... Uh, turned around and like everyone in line turned around. And the woman who's selling her honey straws just standing in fear. And I was like, okay, so I wasn't the only one. I'm not going crazy. Everyone like was in the vicinity just stopped what they were doing and looked all the way up like... Just like in the vicinity general of the direction general of direction, where that sound came like, from, huh? And there were people who were like, "Ah, mountain lion, ah, b- birds, ah, some idiot hiking." Right. Trying, and I was like, "That sounded. It was just weird." I was like, I, "I don't know what to tell you what it was. It could have been some idiot hiking." That, that sounded guttural. It and usually was very guttural. <laughs> I was like, "That didn't sound like me making a call." Right. It sounded angry and just like an actual species of something like i can make a you know like a human i can't do it personally but like a human can make a cricket chirping noise right yeah I know but several it's still people different than the actual cricket chirp like the per the th- entity doing the thing right is still going to sound more real right than a person making the noise i'm yeah. like that sounded gorilla like <laughs> right like, that's just it's the only thing i've ever had i've always wanted to go swatching I've always wanted to, because to, I have been, like, paranormal investigating constantly. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always wanted to do this, but then, like, I think back to this this guy's story in Elizabeth, and, and I'm like, you were night hiking. You absolutely deserve everything that's coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> you were hiking. Like, people were like, yeah, man, I was surfing at night in this great what You were surfing at night in their, in their waters. Right. You deserve to get bit. Right. Like, there are reasons we don't do certain things at certain times. And I think what's kept me from squatching is this is, this is their land. Like, I, right. I wouldn't want them coming into my house and screwing with my video game time. So, right. And I, I think know. it's a big reason that I'm like, I'm not stepping on them right. in their area. Um, just like, you know, the joke stories of like Harambe and the tiger at the Cincinnati Zoo and, right. and all that stuff. Like, dude, you got in their ca- like, what, did what you are you expect? mad for? What's yeah. everybody mad for? You jumped in their cage. Or the people now with the orcas. Yeah. What are you mad for? Yeah. You're messing with them. So, I don't know. I've always wanted to go. Just as long as it doesn't get to the point of the happening where the trees start messing with us. Oh, no. I won't. No. No. I, I, that's why I also don't mess with Mother Nature because she messes back. Right. We're in trouble. I've seen that movie, too. <laughs> um, but if you have had any experiences, please let yeah, us absolutely. Know. Please email us and let we, us know. We are definitely not going to ridicule or anything no. like that. We are 
two people that are genuinely genuinely interested mm-hmm. in and will listen to any and all kind of paranormal tales, whether it be personal first-hand yeah. experiences or I've got a cousin or well, I've got yeah. a sister, grandma, brother. Because I do have dad, tons whatever of friends that's who had have experienced. Any kind of experience like that. Squatching. Yeah, I, or, we would love to hear Yeah, that. absolutely. Um, and maybe that's somebody who we should get on as, as cousin Timmy and sometime and not just fun. talk about Hatfield, but like, okay, well, that's great. You perform and all that, but that's not why you're here. We want to hear your stories, man. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, linking this back to Tennessee Legend Distillery, as he talked a little bit earlier, we have recently made the switch in our vodka label. Yep. Uh, Vicky was very adamant about that. Uh, it's been fun. Uh, we also have a shirt to go along with it. That glows in the dark. It does glow in the dark. The eyes glow in the dark. Yes. While they're not red, they will be the, the green, yes. the typical glow-in-the-dark green color. So you'll have your own eyes shine on your shirt. Um, but absolutely, uh, come check us out. Four locations. Uh, the Tennessee Wildman is now available online, or are we still saving, sifting through our... Uh, I think online is still processing some of what the old label will be, but yes, mm-hmm. it's definitely going to be going into mm-hmm. distribution, so you would be able to go to kegandbottle.com yes. uh, like we've mentioned on several other episodes uh, and you'll hear again as well in the closing mm-hmm. and credits and stuff like that and you'll be able to find that uh, link on any one of our socials as well as, well as our website uh, for pretty much any and all mm-hmm. of our products uh, that are not licensed products uh, you can find those on kegandbottle.com k-e-g-n b-o-t-t-l-e kegandbottle.com So definitely come check it out. Uh, If you're in the area, get you a bottle. Get you a shirt to go along with it. If you have a story, tell us. Tell your bartender. They'll tell us. You know, so. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, As a matter of fact, I tell you what. We will do a giveaway. Mm -hmm. Let's do our first giveaway for the podcast. I love this. Uh, The first person that either writes in Mm -hmm. or comes in Mm -hmm. and tells us their sasquatch experience we will give them a wild man t-shirt sweet so yeah I'm make sure to go, go create a fake email right now go, go. <laughs> and just tell your story <laughs> right go to the go to the uh tld tube 23 mm-hmm. at gmail.com uh or you can go through contact at tennessee legend.com mm-hmm. uh if you are uh, following us on any one of the locations for uh, Tennessee Legend Distillery on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, you can message us through there. But yeah, the first person mm-hmm. that uh, gets us their story, their Sasquatch, their wild man story, and it has to be about the actual wild man, not our vodka. But we'd also <laughs> welcome some stories about the wild man vodka too. Um, we will definitely give you one of the wild man t shirts. We can't give away any alcohol. No. Uh, there's definitely laws against exactly. that stuff. Uh, but yeah, we'll be. Glad to get you one of the Wild Man shirts. And we might even throw in a, a Wild Man sticker or two. Absolutely. Uh, so any final thoughts, be on anything that we discussed today? Don't work out in <laughs> the middle of the night in the summer in East Tennessee do near the lake. Don't do that. Um, no, honestly, if you're going to be doing anything outdoors uh, with or without alcohol, please be safe. Mm. Please be responsible. Um uh, if you are going to be hiking out in the Smokies, make sure to follow any and all the regulations for the backwoods camping and stuff like that. Uh, please check in at the ranger stations and everything else um, when going on those types of hikes. Uh, if you are going to be out enjoying the Smoky Mountains in any capacity, uh, just make sure and familiarize yourself whenever you are going out on the trails with the trailheads, um, where they end, where they begin. Um, any, any and all information, let people know where you're going. Uh, all of that stuff because that's that's something that can and does happen uh, like Tyler said mother nature will will you know do her thing in any capacity at on her time mm. uh, and people are just unfortunately as we alluded to at the very beginning of this episode we're just at the mercy mercy of mother nature and father time so mm. uh, treat Life them and everybody with respect and it'll be gravy absolutely Life uh, uh, finds a way. Thank you, uh, uh, <laughs> Mr. Goldblum. Uh, so, uh, thank you for tuning in. Do not forget to check out our website, TennesseeLegend.com. Check us out on all the socials. Email us, 
We do have new products coming soon, so be on the lookout on Tennessee Legend Distillery's socials, media accounts, and you will be in the know for all the new stuff coming out. Thank you for tuning in. We will be back next week with another episode of Between Two Barrels. I'm Opie. I'm Brian. Cheers to you, legends. Folks, once again, we'd like to thank you for joining us for another episode of Between Two Barrels. And if you aren't getting enough of that legendary content, make sure and head on over to TennesseeLegend.com where you can find links to all of our different locations as well as all of our different social media sites and our online swag shop. And until next time, stay legendary.